Tonight we are going to be looking at the legal and political aspect of uh, the outing yesterday of the Foreign Affairs Minister, Lujun Belambela. In Cameroon we have as guest a senior barrister at law, Barrister Fu Jonso. Good evening to you, Barrister. Thank you so much once again for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me. We thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We would begin first of all by finding out from you as a legal mind. The uh, Ministry of, uh, of Foreign Affairs has indicated that uh, the outing of uh, uh, Peter Balerin violates diplomatic norms that he did not respect the secret that surrounds diplomatic discussions. What does that mean, Barrister? Uh, in normal circumstances, uh, sovereignty of every nation is supposed to be respected. But today, the international humanitarian law read together with the charters of the United Nations and the various enactments makes it, makes it difficult to respect sovereignty of any nation that uses its military might to shoot and maim its citizens. The United States ambassador acting on behalf of his government, because they have all the facts on the ground. I don't care what anybody thinks, the CIA and every other person has been, has been filming through satellite everything that every, anybody is doing on the ground here. And he, the ambassador has all those facts. All he, need, all he did was, hey, you are violating human rights, you are burning down villages, killing people, targeted killing, and so on, using your army. And uh, you cannot imagine that this country uses the taxpayers' money to buy guns and equipment, and they use the same guns and equipment, and the soldiers that have been paid by tax money to kill the, the civilians of this country. Therefore, when humanitarian law is being applied, sovereignty is put at the back burner. So you cannot, you cannot defend that by using sovereignty. The communique of the Minister of Foreign Affairs was rather tactless, very tactless, because it inflames the whole situation. For one thing, an ambassador cannot go and see your boss, who is the President of the Republic, for an audience, and they talk, and then you sit behind and Summon the ambassador to the ministry. It was not a personal decision. It was not a personal He's decision. He's acting under, uh, under, 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 under his government. Under his government. And I want to let you know, uh, let us know, let the public know that the U.S. ambassador was acting on behalf of the United States government, and also after consultation with other ambassadors in Yaoundé of course excluding the African ambassadors, the, the Western ambassadors, especially France. And he went there and he delivered a message. Whatever you want to do with that message is no longer his problem. It was tactless for a minister to sit behind and summon a sitting ambassador after he has met the President of the Republic. If that act took place when, he, when the ambassador had not, did, had not seen the President of the Republic, of, of the Republic I, would, I can tell you that the minister had his right to summon him. So to you, the outing was a mistake? It was a mistake was and was tactless. Efficient, it was, was tactless. Was there another efficient way of handling the situation? The only efficient way was the President of the Republic, if he was not happy, should have issued a communique to Cameroonians from the presidency. It was tactless. Secondly, the, the, the United States ambassador was acting on international humanitarian law to raise a red flag that hey Rwanda cannot be allowed to repeat itself in Cameroon what is so wrong with that and uh, these pseudo professors and pseudo journalists that have come up with all the editorials and condemning the ambassador the ambassador uh, 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 casting aspirations aspirations on on the United States government and so on and so on what do they think they are doing in 1997, Mimi, the then ambassador to Zaire, Mr. B. Richardson, walked up and asked for audience with Mobutu, President Mobutu, 
and went in and told him, your time was up. That was against the sovereignty of any nation. But he was saying what his government had asked him to say. And you knew what happened one month after. Mumbutu was begging for a safe passage to go. I don't think that these people here, they like the poor bear that much. Because poor bear has come to the end of the road and nobody is helping him. Is this now a rift between Yaoundé and Washington DC, a diplomatic rift? From what from, from the communicate from the communicate of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, there's a rift now between the two the two countries. And if this government is wise, they should rush to Washington to repair whatever is repairable. Because I don't see how they will repair it. And you know, the United States is the first power on this earth, whether we like it or not. And when they have seen what is happening and they raise a red flag, and you turn around and insult them, and going to the extent of saying that they have recalled the ambassador when the ambassador was going on leave, uh, annual leave. And of course, there's this practice that when you go on, when they go on annual leave, they go through the state, the state department and uh, have briefing. Then it goes him on leave. He has not been recalled, for all I know. Cameroonians, including these pseudo professors from, I don't know where they come from, uh, they, 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 they want to be heard. I am professor this, I am professor this, and start talking rubbish. They don't even know diplomacy. If they knew diplomacy, they should know that what the ambassador has said, he did not say it by his own volition. Now, the communique equally said that no candidate can be imposed on Cameroon. Is the regime by any chance confirming the candidacy of the President of the Republic? Well, that is exactly what is happening. That is exactly what is happening. I we don't want to. I, I must tell you that something transpired in that presidency between the ambassador and the president. And the, the ambassador came out and gave a press conference on on a diplomatic level. He used all diplomatic language available. You go. You have a heritage to live. You go by by. You go out by. Uh, like Mandela and Washington and, and George Washington. But the government says that Cameroonians are always rallying behind the President of the Republic and voting for him. I heard that, I heard that, and you must want to know that for the 35 years that Bia has been in power, I don't know any year Whereas, I, whereas the outing I don't know how many US years have nothing to do with election rigging. It has nothing to do with election rigging. But now that he has brought it up, you open the door, everybody will enter. All those people who were in were all CPDM people. And they said all kinds of rubbish about about winning election. Can anybody in this country look at look at me in the eye and tell me whether Bia has won any election organized in this country? But normally? officially, officially, he has always won. Well, officially, election. well, well, in when you rig elections stuff. and you win, officially you have won. In '92, when Francis Cook, when Prince won election here, you saw what they did to Francis Cook because France was not not with the United States. This time around. France cannot be seen when there's gross violation of international humanitarian law, crimes against humanity, burning down villages, killing people, targeted killing. Just yesterday, they killed uh, four, 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 four young boys in Bafut. Just yesterday and the day before, they burned down Ngi and Gingwo, including the palace of, the, of, 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 of Chifa Nyangwe, and also Kasna Nyangwe's family, Everything raised down, including the market, including even the biggest businessman in that area. What means that they have not taken any advice from the ambassador. Now, what is the role of the Anglophone crisis in the ongoing diplomatic rift, like you said, between the government of Cameroon and the United States? The fight between, if there's a fight at all, between the United States and Cameroon has nothing to do with this fight, except that it it is talking about the killings, the targeted killings and the, and the humanitarian law violations carried out by the government. Uh, that, is the, that is the only connection I see. But from what I know, it will not affect the fight on the ground until, until Mr. Bia is willing to sit down with the leaders of the, of, of the interim government of Ambazonia, let's call it the name, and talk. 
There's nothing that cannot is not repairable, Mimi. But if you behave like a king and say it is either this or that, well, you take the consequences. I want to say here that if I understand diplomacy and if I take what happened in 97 in Zaire, Mr. Pierre should be very careful, tell his people to be careful the way they talk on the media and when they talk in the world, because the United States is listening. How far can the U.S. go? How far can they go? Who? Do you think it can end only at the level of the, 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 the press releases that we've seen so far? Mimi, and the declarations. Mimi, Cameroon cannot go any further. But I cannot also say, they say that the United States will not go any further. They have taken a position. They sent the ambassador. He announced it. And any, it, where the chips fall, that's where they'll fall. Let's wait and see in the next, in the next uh, weeks, months, you see what happens. I, I, there's a rumor that Mr. Bia wants to meet with uh, Seseko Ayukta. That's, in, in that's unconfirmed. Is it's unconfirmed. I said that's a rumor. I call it a rumor. Of course. Barista. I call it a rumor because it's unconfirmed. But if that doesn't take place and this war continues, huh, we don't know what the United States can do. I am watching. There's another unconfirmed news about the United Nations Security Council. I cannot even talk about it because it's, it is not, I don't know the source. Now, Barrister, tomorrow Mancho BBC and other detainees of the Anglophone crisis will be appearing in court. Again, The case like has been today. going on for several months now, more than one year. What do you have to say about that? I am, waiting. Expecting a I am waiting. I am waiting for Mr. Mr. Bia to sentence Mancho BBC. And let's see where we we'll go from there. Because it is not going to be easy in Bamenda. The lawyers have pleaded. Yeah, that's why, that's that why, that's why that they, they are dilly dallying away uh, with the sentencing of Mancho BBC. That's why they are dilly dallying because at this time that we are supposed to be coming out of the crisis, you keep sentencing, especially a man like Mancho BBC who has done nothing except revendicate bad roads in Bameda Town. So you think it should be released? Is that what ah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what the defense lawyers are yeah, it should be, it should, release. It should, it should be discharged should, and acquitted if it was a normal it. court. But it's not a normal court. So I cannot even count on that. If it was a normal court, it should be discharged and acquitted. But it's not a normal court. He had, he, they had already found him guilty on certain charges. And acquitted him of... Uh, uh, acquitted of him charges. on some. Uh, they, will be, they, will certainly go, they are certainly going to sentence him. And let's see... What happens in Bamenda and other uh, Anglophone hotspots? Barista, thank you. Thank you very much.